All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So the most recent update on JP Dokkan brought in some pretty interesting stuff. I mean, of course, there's the update 4.14.0 itself, which, you know, has some new features, which is pretty cool. And we'll talk about that. But the more exciting stuff is actually in the game files. And it was found by some of the data miners out there on Twitter. So uh, that's going to be the focus of this video. But why don't we start with version 4.14.0 first and uh, see what that brought. Okay, so the first thing at the very top here is we now have the ability to make adjustments to units that are set as supporters in chain battle, right? So previously, if you had a unit as one of your supporters, you couldn't do anything with them. You couldn't awaken them, train them, reverse them, all that stuff. And now with this update, we can do that. So that's number one. Number two is a new a UI change in summons where if you have a unit that's a Dokkan Festival exclusive appear in your summons, then there's going to be this Dokkan Festival logo that pops up in front of the card art to let you know that you pulled a Dokkan Fest exclusive. And also, once you're done your multi, there's also going to be a little logo on the top left corner of the card. So basically for newer players who maybe don't know which cards are good, which cards to keep, all that stuff, this icon will at least tell them that there's something special about this card and you should probably hold on to it, right? It's very similar to the uh, LR logo that we already have in the game, but just for Dokkan Festival exclusive units. Now, the interesting question is, if there is a Dokkan Festival exclusive LR that's pulled, then is it going to be like double icons at the same time or one after another or something like that? I'm not really sure. Either way, I'm sure we'll find out soon. So that's the second thing. Uh, number three, we have a bit of a change to the mission user interface. So instead of giving us like fractions or like percentages towards mission completion, now it's going to give you the exact number that you're still missing. Okay, so for example, if there's a mission that requires you to clear a stage a certain amount of times, it'll show you exactly how many clears you have compared to how many clears you still need. And also same thing for if you need to kill a certain amount of enemies, it's going to show that you killed 500 out of the required 1,000 enemies or something like that. So just going to make things a little bit easier for us Dokkan players and require you to do less math on your part, right? So that's number three. And for number four, we have the uh, inclusion of the Great Ape transformations for uh, units that have, you know, these transformations in the card details. So now if you click on the little tab on top of the card art, you can click on the Great Ape transformation and uh, take a look at the details for the transformation, just like, you know, other types of transformations in the game, but now they also included it for uh, Great Apes as well. Uh, oh, I think this also applies to Rage mechanics as well. So I assume that this would also include units like the Tech Beerus's uh, Rage mechanic, as well as like the uh, Int LR Rose's Rage transformation too, right? So uh, that is the fourth change. And finally, at the bottom here, we just have some bug fixes. So that is update 4.14.0. Nothing too significant, but some nice quality of life changes. Now, uh, like I said, the more interesting stuff, the more exciting stuff is all over here on Twitter. Big shout out to Marketing3 for mining all this stuff and also posting it on Twitter. And uh, we'll just start from the bottom here. So we have something about safety net, which uh, we've talked about in the past. But uh, yeah, here we have some details about a potential joint mission in the game file. So we got personal mission, cooperation mission, confrontation mission, and team mission. And um, the first thing that comes to mind for me is obviously they're planning to do another joint celebration or joint campaign for Global and JP in the near future, right? Now, I don't know when this would be. Obviously, the worldwide celebration is still very far away in like August. So the most likely thing, in my opinion, is that we'll be getting some kind of like a mini joint celebration during Christmas or New Year's, where we'll get some missions that require the efforts of both global and JP players to complete, right? Now, I don't really know what confrontation mission and team mission means. I don't know if this was like already in the game files or maybe it's something that's brand new they're planning to implement for this uh, next joint campaign. We'll have to see. But either way, guys, um, I would expect a new joint or combined celebration for Global and JP in the near future. 
definitely stay tuned for that once we get more details. All right. Now from there, we have some info about like character stacks, character stack max, number of selections, so on and so forth. No idea what this means, but I would only assume it's something to do with like your your box, where if you have you know multiple copies of the same unit, then instead of taking up multiple spaces in your box, they'll just all stack and only take up one slot, possibly. Not really sure. I mean, I have like 20 or 30 AGL Khaliflas, right? So if this was actually a thing, if this was actually implemented the way that I think it's going to be, then I might actually save like half my box space right now. Like I could go from, you know, 1300 characters, which I think is what I have right now, to like 700 or something like that. I mean, I feel like it's probably going to be kind of different from what we're imagining at the moment, but uh, that's also going to be a thing, so stay tuned for more details. Okay, so from there we have, oh, okay, so revival skills. Now this is uh, potentially really huge. This seems like a new mechanic that is very similar to active skills or transformations that already exist in the game, and it says here, can be revived if conditions are met, which obviously sounds like an active seal condition or a transformation condition, right? So based on the name revival skills, you would think that it's an ability that will restore your HP or at least bring you back to life after you die. So let's say normally, you know, you get hit by a super and then you lose all your HP, you would just get the KO screen, lose the event and have to reattempt it, right? But with this revival skill, maybe when you die, the skill activates and it just brings you back to life so you can try again. It's basically like a second life, right? So that's what I think this is. It could be something completely different. I think I did see somewhere else that these revival skills not only can recover your HP, but also give you attack and defense boosts. So I'm thinking for maybe certain characters, when you revive, they also get a big you know, boost in stats, at least maybe for a couple turns or for one turn, something like that, as part of their, you know, revival right now. Markkinen did put out an interesting uh, guess here. He says, I'll drop my crazy tinfoil conspiracy that LR6 anniversary could be a Goku that if he dies of a super attack, he becomes Ultra Instinct. Now, this is definitely possible and it actually even sounds kind of likely, right? That like you have this Goku, and then if you if you die, like if you lose our HP, then he revives and transforms into Ultra Instinct. Now, my issue with this uh, prediction is the fact that if this is true, then you would almost never see the Ultra Instinct transformation unless you're purposely bringing units that have very low defense and will get you killed, right? Because essentially, if you think about it, the condition for the revival skills is to lose all your HP. You have to be at 0% HP and then it's gonna activate and then revive you. And then for certain units that maybe have a transformation upon revival, um, that's gonna be their transformation condition, right? So if you've complained about, you know, HP being below 60% or 50% being too restrictive, this is even worse. This is HP at 0% to transform, right? So it's plausible for sure. I could definitely see Akatsuki and Bandai doing this, but I would hate it. Because once again, it would make the Ultra Instinct transformation very hard to achieve, right? And unless you're purposely getting yourself killed, which isn't really how you wanna play the game, uh, I'm just not gonna see it that much. So I'm hoping that's not what it is. And what I'm hoping for is that, you know, even if these new LRs for the sixth anniversary have these revival skills, it's not tied to their transformation, right? Instead, it's just, you know, an attack or defense boost or healing or something like that when you die. Or maybe you don't have to die. One other possibility I was considering was that what if instead of, you know, having to be at 0% HP to get the revival skill to activate, maybe it's just going to be like a certain amount of damage that that specific unit has to take for the revival skill to activate. So for example, let's say um, the condition is this unit has to absorb like 300,000 damage and then you meet the revival skill conditions. You can activate it and get a good amount of healing or get an attack or defense boost or some other effect that we haven't seen yet. I think that would actually be much better because it would be much easier 
to achieve, right? So once again, guys, we don't have that many details, so I'm just speculating at the moment. But uh, we are going to be getting this new mechanic uh, called revival skills, kind of like active skills that potentially could make your team very hard to kill. Imagine if like one of the boo units or like a new boo unit, a kid boo possibly, has this revival skill. That boo team already heals so much, already is so tanky that it's almost impossible to kill. Now you add a unit that can fully revive you or fully heal you when you die. It's basically going to make that team immortal like it was already really really hard to kill before you add a uh, kid boo or something like that that can fully revive you that's gonna be crazy and the other question of course is like what if you include multiple units on that team that have this revival skill right like are you gonna be able to just revive over and over and over again with like each unit proccing in succession or is it only gonna allow you to get one revival skill off for each run or maybe you can only include one unit with a revival skill on your team per event or something like that. That would actually make a lot of sense, right? So we'll have to see. More details will definitely eventually come with future updates. So stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, so more joint campaign and team missions. Here we go. I'm not going to go through all of them, of course. But as you can see, there are a lot, a lot of mission uh, details in the files, which further adds to the idea that we will probably be getting a joint campaign quite soon and also some assets here uh interesting maybe to do with the joint campaign once again for global and jp and uh oh he says my guess on this is maybe if you have a lot of the same characters they'll stack or just one thumb like for elder kai slash dozen kai slash monkey kai slash satan or hercule statues so uh, pretty much what I was saying before, right? Like if you have multiple of the same character, they'll stack into one as opposed to uh, having them all take up like a bunch of box space. Now for the Hercule statues and stuff like that, it doesn't really matter, right? Because they don't take up box space anyways. But if this also includes just summonable units or just units in general, that would make a huge, huge difference. And uh, I think that's it from Markkanen 3. So big shout out to Markkanen 3 once again. And now let's move on to Air Dokkan's page. And the only thing I want to cover here is this card costume label thing. Okay, so apparently, apparently there's something in the game files about card costumes. And the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this was something like in um, Grand Cross, right? Some at least in Grand Cross where you can buy like different costumes for your characters. I mean, obviously there's the free ones, but then the premium ones that you have to pay for are usually much better. And it's just like a visual cosmetic thing, but they also, no, actually no, for Grand Cross, they also gave additional stats, if I remember correctly. But I don't see that happening for Dokkan. Honestly, I'm really hoping that all this is, is the ability to turn off the diamond background effect because I think it's really annoying. I know some people don't mind it, and I don't mind it that much either, to be honest, like it doesn't ruin the experience for me, but if I had the choice to turn off the diamond background for most cards, I probably would do that, right? Because like some cards have some really cool like background art, but it gets obscured by the diamond effect. So if we just had that ability, if that's all this was, I would be really happy about it. But if you wanted to go a little bit deeper, let's say... We also have the ability to, you know, change the outfits of certain characters in their card art, which would also be reflected in the sprite in game. That'd be okay as well. So, for example, Goku and Vegeta, instead of their normal outfits, you can change them into like the jackets from the Broly movie or their Whis training outfits or something like that. And then for Android 18, for example, instead of her, you know, regular jacket, you can give her the pink tracksuit or the kimono from that uh, New Year's 18 card. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Yo, I'm getting too excited right now talking about 18. Anyways, a uh, card costume thing might be on the way. Don't think it's gonna be quite like Grand Cross where you can buy multiple costumes, but it is something that a lot of games have implemented. But this is definitely a very fan servicey thing that Dokkan in general has kind of stayed away from. I don't really see them going that route. Uh, at this point in the game but you never know anything is possible so uh i guess stay tuned once again and that is everything that i want to talk about in today's video guys the main highlights of course are update 4.14.0 and all the new features 
and then we have the revival skills which potentially can fully heal your team when you die and also provide some kind of transformation or stat boost and uh, also the card costume thing which I'm hoping is nothing too crazy but uh, we'll have to see and uh, guys that is the video thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about all this stuff give me your ideas give me your speculation about uh, what all this stuff means and uh, once again once we have some more details about everything I'll make sure to keep you guys posted in another video. And until next time, if you guys liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. To join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows if you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.